As sports history fans, we often reminisce about the legends. Willis Reed limping on to the NBA Finals Court, Kurt Schilling's bloody sock, Kerry Strug's courageous dismount, and so many more. These moments often define sports history. But what about the countless injuries that did not become legends or careers that were derailed due to inadequate care? That's where this episode sponsor comes in. Introducing to you, ILP Sports Consultants, your trusted sports injury partner available 24-7. Brian Maelli at ILP Sports Consultants has over 20 years of experience in the orthopedic and sports medicine industry, and he has worked with athletes across the gamut, from youth to amateurs, professionals, in almost every sport played in the United States of America, accommodating athletes at every stage of their career. This adaptability ensures that ILP services are perfectly tailored to your skill level, no matter where you are in your athletic journey. With ILP, you are in control. Choose the steps that matter most to you. Diagnosis, treatment plan, recovery, or the whole journey. ILP services are tailored to your unique needs. Rushing for care is a common pitfall leading to future problems. ILP Sports Consultants helps you make the right decisions, ensuring that you receive timely and safe care. And here's a bonus. Brian hosts the Injured List podcast, sharing insights and athlete stories you won't want to miss. Whether you're a concerned parent or grandparent or an athlete yourself seeking guidance, ILP Sports Consultants is your beacon of hope in sports injury management. Visit ILPSports.com today. That's the letters ILP Sports.com. ILP Sports Consultants, where your well being is the priority and your recovery is the mission. Choose ILP Sports Consultants for a healthier sports journey, helping you get back in the game the smart way. This is Basketball History 101 with Rick Loiza. Welcome back to award-winning Basketball History 101, part of the Sports History Network. I am your host, Rick Loiza, and this is a podcast where we bring to life some of the forgotten stories from basketball history. We are bringing old-school basketball to a new-school audience, and today we bring you the story of Hall of Famer Larry Fleischer. But Fleischer was not a player. He was not a coach. He was not a trainer or even an owner. The highest level of basketball he ever participated in was playing pickup games against future lawyers, judges, and senators. I have wanted to do a story on Fleischer for quite some time. The reason is that over the years, we have produced a number of episodes about stories where Fleischer participated in the background but was not named as part of the story. And there is a reason for that. Even though he has been part of some major events in the history of the NBA, I tried to keep the focus on the main story without getting too caught up in the additional details that did not move the story forward, but now it is time to shine a spotlight on Fleischer. He was born in 1930 in the Bronx in New York and always showed an incredible intellect. He was raised by working class parents and he loved sports. He was often at the local park playing everything from basketball and baseball and with an incredible intellect, Larry finished high school at the age of 16 and then enrolled in New York University to study accounting. And accounting is what would help him as he negotiated many contracts against shrewd NBA owners. By the age of 19, Fleischer had earned his bachelor's degree and had then enrolled in Harvard Law School. That is very impressive. So how did he get into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame to begin with if he was never involved with basketball directly? He is in the Hall of Fame in the role of contributor. A contributor is someone who has advanced the cause of basketball in a significant way. Now, that is somewhat vague definition, but it needs to be because you never know what someone might do in the name of advancing the game of basketball in some way, shape, or form. And I'm talking about Larry Fleischer is almost like going through a trip down memory lane through many of our previous episodes. So let me start with the first one. Way back in episode 85, we told the story of how the NBA All-Stars nearly boycotted the All-Star game held in Boston back in 1964. The players had been asking for a pension and other benefits for years, but the owners continually just put them off. The owners would say that they would consider it or that they would talk about it over the summer, but nothing ever came of the players' requests. As you can imagine, the players are not happy about not having their requests seriously considered. Up until 1964, the players 
players had an unofficial players association. However, it was not legally recognized by the owners of the NBA, but it was a framework through which the players could work with each other across the entire NBA to identify player concerns and formally request that the owners take a look at those issues. The All-Star players that year organized and decided that they would boycott the All-Star game if the owners did not meet their demands. So here you had players like Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain, Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, Elgin Baylor, Bob Pettit, Hal Greer, Jerry Lucas, and Tom Heinsohn all huddled together in one locker room, refusing to come out until the owners legally recognized their players' union and grant them the benefits that they had been seeking. The strategy worked, and now the players would negotiate through a collective bargaining agreement for all future salary and benefit issues. By the way, the items that the players were looking for back in 1964 were having trainers available at all NBA games, which was not a thing back then. They also wanted a pension plan put in place to help the players make ends meet during their retirement. And they also wanted a rule that said that there has to be 24 hours between the start of games on consecutive days. Now, here is a specific situation that led to that last demand. Often the NBA back then would schedule teams to play on a Saturday night around 7 or 8 p.m. Then they would schedule the teams to play their next game on Sunday afternoon around 1 or 2 p.m. That is only 18 hours between tip-offs. And then when you throw in the travel time between those games, Often, the players did not even get a chance to sleep between NBA games. The players wanted to end that practice. Now, I am telling you the short version of the story because Larry Fleischer is the guy who helped organize the boycott. You see, while the Players Association was not officially recognized, the players had always hoped that they would be recognized and get their demands met. And they also knew that in order to make that happen, they needed to have an attorney working with them to help them make all of this happen. Tommy Heinsohn was the president of the Players Association at the time and it was recommended to him to bring in Fleischer as the attorney for the union. It was Fleischer who helped create the strategy for how the boycott would work. Thankfully, after some yelling and screaming, the owners officially recognized the players' union and the players exited the locker room and played the All-Star game, with none of the fans being any wiser of what had just taken place in the locker room area. But let me be clear. Fleischer was involved in that entire situation and had even drawn up the papers that the owners signed recognizing the union. Again, that is episode 85 if you want to go ahead and check that out. Now, let me fast forward to another major event that Fleischer was a part of. It resulted in something called the Oscar Robertson rule that granted players free agency for the very first time. Now, I'll share that story right after this break. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of you unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876 including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows towels and even shower curtains go to sportshistorynetwork.com ROW number one for access to the full row one catalog and for gallery prints and gift items plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the row one pictorum gallery with coupon code SHN15 follow the link on the show notes Hi, everybody. Dan and Andrew from Hello Old Sports here. We wanted to drop in and let you know about our latest episode. That's right. We interviewed the co-authors of Phyllis George, Shattering the Ceiling, a biography of groundbreaking broadcaster Phyllis George. And her life is really sort of a journey through 20th century America, from Miss America pageants to the Kentucky State House to the groundbreaking NFL Today show on CBS, even the Kentucky Colonels, the old ABA. We got into all sorts of stories about the Celtics under Red Auerbach, about the interview with Roger Staubach, about 
really all sorts of things, a fight between Brent Musburger and Jimmy the Greek. We really enjoyed talking with Lenny Shulman and Paul Volponi, who teamed up to write this book. The book is on sale right now wherever books are sold. You know, within reason, garage sales, probably not. So go ahead and pick up a copy today. And if you want a chance to win the book, you can go to sportshistorynetwork.com slash giveaways and register for a chance to win. Goodbye, old sports. Welcome back to the show and let us continue with the story of Larry Fleischer. He was an attorney that had spent over 25 years working for NBA players. He helped organize the all-star boycott of 1964 that never happened because the owners gave in and recognized the players union and granted the players medical benefits and a pension that they were seeking. Now, right before the break, I mentioned that Fleischer was involved in the trial that granted the players free agency. Prior to this rule, a player's rights were owned by the team forever. That means that once a player was drafted, Drafted by a team, he was tied to that team forever, even after his contract ran out. A player could not just sign with another team. That player could only sign a new contract with their same team or else leave the NBA altogether. It was terrible. In what other industry could a company fire you, but then at the same time, not let you work for anybody else? That is what the players were up against. So back in episode 117, we shared the story of Oscar Robertson versus the NBA. Robertson was the president of the Players Union by the time that 1970 rolled around. He had played for the Cincinnati Royals for 10 seasons and he wanted to play elsewhere. The team was not finding a lot of success on the court and Robertson was not getting any younger. He wanted to move to a different team where he might have the chance to compete for a championship. And that feeling is not that different than what many NBA players go through today. The problem was that even when his contract ran out with the Royals, he could could not just sign with another team. His only option was to either sign a new contract with the Royals or retire. He talked this over with other players in the league and they decided to sue the NBA for free agency. They felt that the labor laws were on their side and so they went for it. Seeing as Robertson was a president of the players union, he put his name as the lead plaintiff on what was technically a class action lawsuit. The other players that were part of the lawsuit were the various team representatives like John Havlicek from the Celtics, Wes Unseld from the Bullets, and Bill Bradley from the Knicks. They took nearly six years to get that lawsuit to finally be settled, long after Robertson himself had retired. But they won their free agency and players now had the ability to sign a contract with a new team once their old contract ran out. It was an enormous day for NBA players. Well, Larry Fleischer, again, was the attorney representing the players in that lawsuit. He spent countless hours over six years helping the players get what they were asking for. He was extremely instrumental in winning that case. And if you want to hear that full story, go back to episode 117 to check it out. Now, here is another event that Fleischer was part of. He was representing the players in the negotiations that led to the merger between the NBA and the ABA. Now, that was a story we covered back in episode 29, although the focus of that episode was the incredibly lucrative contract that the owners of the Spirits of St. Louis were able to negotiate. But in that episode, we share the story of how the two leagues came together to merge into a single league. Fleischer was the creative legal mind that helped all parties come to an agreement. The ABA had seven teams at the time of the merger, but only four were going to actually join the NBA, and the other three teams received buyout agreements to just go away and close down their teams. So here we have Larry Fleischer as the attorney for the Players Union that helped get the union recognized in 1964. He then was the lead attorney for the union in the free agency lawsuit, and then he represented the players again in 1976 when the NBA and the ABA merged. The last major event that Fleischer was part of that we have never done an episode on is back in 1985 in negotiations between the NBA and the Players Association. It was during that specific collective bargaining that a team salary cap was established in the NBA. It was a concession that the players gave to the owners in return for additional benefits. The salary cap is roughly calculated at 50% of all NBA income. Now, in episode 128, I share that story of what it takes to build an NBA team from scratch, and as part of that episode, I break down the salary cap and how it is calculated and who gets what. In any case, the impact that Larry Fleischer has had on the NBA has been incredible. But here's the final thing I want to say about Larry Fleischer. He served for 25 years as the legal counsel for the Players Association without ever receiving a single dime. He worked for the players pro bono. That is, 
he worked for free for the NBA Players Association. That is just incredible. Now, at the time, he also represented a number of players as their agent, and that is how he made most of his income. He was hired back in 1967 to negotiate Bill Bradley's rookie contract with the New York Knicks. Fleischer got him $750,000 over four years, which was the largest contract in NBA history at the time. You can imagine that he got a lot of phone calls after that from other NBA players that wanted Fleischer to help them negotiate their contracts. Fleischer was more than happy to oblige. Now, some say that there was a conflict of interest in having Fleischer be a player's agent and also represent the player's union as a whole. Now, some felt that he had the power as legal counsel for the player's union to funnel certain endorsements toward his clients. Now, I honestly have no idea if he ever did that or not. I could not find anything suggesting that he did that. But at the same time, it probably wasn't a good idea to have both roles as player agent and head of the players union. But regardless, the work that he did on behalf of the NBA players is absolutely incredible. Now, in any case, negotiating contracts and collective bargaining agreements between players and owners is what got him into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I think he deserves to be in there. His contributions shaped how players are compensated in the NBA, and not just in terms of salary, but also in terms of their medical benefits, travel, pensions, etc. So hats off to Larry Fleischer and all that he gave to the NBA. The NBA is on solid financial footing in large part because of the negotiations that he participated in from the early 1960s through the mid 1980s. Sadly, he passed away in 1989 from a heart attack while playing squash at the New York Athletic Club, but his impact is still felt across the entire league as the NBA is the highest paying basketball league in the world, which is why it attracts all the best players from around the world into one league. That had partly to do with Larry Fleischer's efforts on behalf of NBA players. Well, that is it for today. Join us next time when we share the story of Jerry Lucas, a Hall of Fame player for the Royals and the Knicks, and he was a best-selling author on books about improving your memory. That's next time on Basketball History 101, part of the Sports History Network, the headquarters of Sports Yesteryear. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com to find out more about this and other sports history podcasts. If you like what you hear, please hit that subscribe button wherever you get your podcasts and check out our page on Facebook. It's called Basketball History 101 Podcast. There you will find shorter historical posts as well as comments and discussion starters on today's game. I'll also announce there when new episodes come out. I want to thank my producer and editor, Jacob Loiza. Join us each week as we continue to mine the history of basketball for more great stories from the past. Take care and see you soon. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. Do you wish you knew more about the 100 seasons of the NFL? You're in luck because you found the Football History Dude podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. From the founding of the league in an auto showroom, all the way to what it is today, America's favorite sport and a behemoth of an industry. My name is Ernie Chapman. Football is my passion, and I want you to come along with me each week to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board, my DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.